Hello and welcome to this short build from scratch demo with Anaplan. In the next 15 to 20 minutes I will be showcasing you how to build a basic B&L model in Anaplan, highlighting some of the key features of the platform and not only demonstrate how easy but also how fast we can perform calculations and design dashboards compared to many other planning tool providers. My goal of this demo session is to offer you a systematic and comprehensive guide how to construct an Anaplan model with a step-by-step -step guidance. Again, Anaplan is a cloud-based platform, so there is no need for any application installation. We log into our account via the browser and can immediately start to build our model. What you are seeing now is my so-called workspace, where I have already created and prepared an app for our demo, as you can see here on the right corner of my screen. As already mentioned, for this session I would like to set up a simple P&L model with corresponding modules as well as dashboards to it. When clicking on the app, we can see that two dashboards are already created. One is the final version, how our dashboard will look like in the end of our demo, whereas the other one is still empty and we will use it in order to build together. So, by clicking on the three points in the right corner here, under my name tag, we can enter the backend of Anaplan, which is our calculation engine. So now we have entered the backend of Anaplan. On the left, you can see our so-called model setting bar, providing us with many different features. We have a time setting, where we can enter different time frames to our model. We have a version option, where we can set up forecast versus an actual version and compare also different scenarios together. We have a list option uh, which can be either imported from external resources such as ERP systems or we can create lists directly in Anaplan as we are going to do now. We have some modules, it's where we can set up our business logic and we have also the possibility to give users different access rights to our model. We can see that there are already several lists created for us. Under Products, we have an overall product list, which contains all the products offered by our company. Next, we have some product categories, where we can categorize products based on their similarities. Our company is selling electronic and hardware, which can be broken down into computer, mobile devices, as well as TV and entertainment. Finally, we can break down the products into subcategories based on their specific features or attributes, as we can see here. When we hit back to our general list setting bar, we can also see that below we have a list which contains all the regions where our company is operating in. What is still missing is a list of our stores that belong to each region, which we are going to create now. When we click on the insert button, we can add our store list to our general lists. When we open our list, we can enter our different store names. Afterwards, we need to apply a level of hierarchy. Since stores belong to regions, we can add them as a parent hierarchy. In the last step, we need to assign each store to a corresponding region. we have created our list, we will need to set up a so-called system model for our stores. We will therefore head over to the module function. In general, using a system module for each list in Anaplan is best practice and ensures an efficient and effective management of data as well as metadata across models and applications. So let's create the module by clicking on the insert button. For our module name, we can use sys03 stores. As dimensions, we will need our stores as well as two line items, namely stores and region. Finally, we can pivot these two dimensions with each other and click on the OK button in order to create our module. When entering the blueprint mode, we can instantly see our two created line items, but we need to change the format from a number 
to a list. The same is true for our regions. Using the so-called item function, we can pull in the stores list into our module. Now we only need to assign each region to a store again before we finally can head over to perform some calculations. That's how easy and fast you can set up a module in Anaplan. After setting up our store list and system module, we have everything we need to finally perform some calculations. We will create three calculation modules, starting with our region, continuing with our stores, and finally we are going to set up a simple P&L module to calculate the net income and other important KPIs. So let's start with our original calculation module. We assume that we want to add specific price percentage increases for our three regions, which can be achieved through several marketing incentives. Again, we click on the Insert Module button. We can use Calc01 as an abbreviation for our calculation module. We need our regional lists as well as one line item, namely the percentage price increase. Again, we can pivot these two dimensions with each other and click on the OK button in order to set up our module. When entering the blueprint mode, we finally need to format the line item percentage increase into a percentage formatted number. Moreover, we just want to have one digit. The last step is to finally apply a few percentage increases to our regions. As for instance for America, we can use 10%, for the APAC region we use 20%, and for Europe, we finally can use 30%. In the next step, it's important that our regional price percentage increases are also linked with the correct stores. In order to do so, we need to use the Anaplan lookup function, where we can search for specific values in our source module and display the desired values in the so-called target module. It's the same process as before. We click on the insert module button, use calc02 stores as an abbreviation. We then need stores as well as one line item, namely the percentage price increases. And click on the OK button in order to set up our module. We then enter our blueprint mode and first format the number to a percentage as we did before. And now we need to enter the formula function and we need to look up our percentage regional increases which can be found in our calculation model and map them with the corresponding regions for our stores which can be found in our system module under regions. Leaving the blueprint mode we can now see that each store has the correct percentage increase. The last calculation module to set up is our P&L module. Again, we start by clicking on the Insert Module button. We name our module Calc03 P&L Calculation. This time, as dimensions, we need our stores as well as our products. Moreover, for this module, we need a few line items. We want to calculate the revenue, the cost of goods sold, our net income, as well as our previous year revenue as a comparison, and finally our year-over-year -year growth rate but in percentage. When we click on the OK button, we can set up our p l module. The next step is to adapt the number format, since I want to have euros as a currency setting. Therefore, I click on the format button and under units I can choose the currency as well as euros as a currency option. Via the copy-paste function, 
I can do this for all my line items, except for the year over year growth rate, which I want to have in the percentage format. Now, let's change the style setting and bring in some structure. For the revenue line item, I can choose the summary one style option. For the cost of goods sold, I will choose summary two. And for the net income, again, summary one. And for the rest of my line items, I will choose summary two again. We need to add a time scale since I want to compare the performance of my previous years with each other. Therefore, I can change the time scale to a yearly basis. Via the copy and paste function again, I can apply all my time setting changes to my other line items as well. Now we can undertake some calculations. For the revenue, for instance, we need our sales price for each product and multiply it with the percentage each. Now we can undertake some calculations. For the revenue, we need our sales price for each product and multiply it with the percentage increase for each store, respectively each region. We can enter the formula setting bar and head over to my system module for my products, where I can find my sales price for each product. Now we are going to multiply it with the percentage increase which can be found in my calculation module for each store. The next step is to calculate my cost of goods sold, which again can be found in my system module. Calculating the net income is quite easy, since we just need to subtract the cost of goods sold from my revenue. The next step is to calculate the previous revenue. For the previous year revenue calculation, we can use the Anaplan offset function, which returns a value from a period before or after the current period. Again, we enter the formula function and use offset our revenue minus 1, since minus 1 is indicating that we want to compare past years, as well as 0. Finally, we need to calculate our year-over-year -year growth rate, which is simply our revenue divided by our year-over-year -year growth rate minus 1. Back in our front end, we can now start to publish our created modules on our dashboard. We therefore click on the editor and start to publish our modules. To the right of my screen, you can see that I can add a lot of different cards to my dashboard. The first module which I want to publish is our P&L one, for which I'm going to select a so-called grid card. I will click on the configure mode and select my calculation module 3, which is also my profit and loss calculation. Since I want to display the data from the financial years 2019 until 2021, I can use the so-called show and tie function to do so. Clicking on the apply, all my changes are saved. I will add a title to my grid, P&L calculation, before I finally click on the publish button and all my changes are overtaken and directly published on my dashboard. Further, I want to place a graphical illustration of my P&L as well, in order to make my dashboard more visually appealing. So this time, I will select a chart card from my P&L module and I will apply the same filters as before. Again, we're gonna choose the chart card, click on the configure mode, select our P&L calculation module, time filter, and finish with the apply button. Down below, you can see that I can select specific chart types. In my case, or in our case, we want to use the combination chart. Moreover, I can configure my chart in more detail and select the column setting for my line items for revenue. In this case, we choose the column setting for my cost of goods sold as well, the net income, the previous year revenue, but for my year over year growth rate, I want to have a line chart. Again, I can finish it with my publish button 
and all my changes are saved and displayed on my dashboard. Further, I want to place a graphical illustration of my P&L as well, in order to make my dashboard a little bit more visually appealing. So this time, I will select a chart card from my P&L module, and I will apply the same year filters as before. Again, we are going to select the chart card, click on the configure button, select our P&L calculation module, and apply the same time filters as we did before. Below you can see that we can select different chart types. In our case, we want to go with the combination chart. Moreover, I will configure my graph in more detail and I can select specific settings for my revenue. So I want to have it in a column setting. The same is true for my cost of goods sold, my net income, as well as my previous year revenue. Whereas my year over year growth rate, I want to display in the line chart. Finishing with the Publish button, all my changes are saved and published directly on my dashboard. So let's publish another grid chart where we can undertake price increase changes directly on our dashboard. To do so, we enter the edit mode again, click on the grid chart, as well as on the configure mode, but this time we will select our calculation module 1, namely our regions. We now pivot a little bit around. We put our region lists down into our rows and move our line items up into our columns. Clicking on the update button, everything will be saved. And this time we click on the grid function and allow enter as well as editing sale later. Finally, finishing with the publish button again, all my changes are published on my dashboard directly. Looking to the right under the car template library, you can see that I've already prepared some templates, such as our company logo, a nice header for our dashboard, as well as a photo of our CFO and some instructions in order to let him know how he can use this dashboard in the most efficient way. So let's display these cards together and start with the logos as well as our header. So let's put our logos in the left and right corner and place a nice title for our dashboard between them. As you can see, Everything in Anaplan is quite flexible and we can make cards even bigger or smaller, just like we need them. In order to bring in some structure, I can put a nice horizontal line below my title. Afterwards, we can display a picture of our CFO as well as some instructions below. After clicking on the publish button, we have finished the process of creating our dashboard and can now analyze our data together. In the end, we have created a simple but powerful dashboard with some of the most essential information. In the right corner, we can see we have our drop-down field where we can select specific products as well as regions, respectively stores. And we can see that all our data is always updated in real time. Moreover, we can apply price increases and see the results directly displayed in our numbers. So to sum up, Anaplan has a user-friendly interface and fast performance, ensuring that users can easily navigate the platform and perform tasks efficiently. Moreover, we can easily customize our modules and workflows to our specific business requirements, as we did it together in our example. Finally, as I said, all data is updated in real time, so each planner is always working on the most current data and changes are very easy to track. I hope you enjoyed this short build from scratch demo as I did. If you are interested in a more depth demo session to see many of Anaplan's capabilities, feel free to contact me anytime. Thank you.